गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू येट अनादर सेशन ऑफ जोग्राफी नाउ इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन हाउ सीजन्स अकर पार्ट टू वीडियो नंबर वन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी वीडियो नंबर टू बट बिफोर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज आर वीडियो नंबर वन वी हैव सीन इन वीडियो वन अपरेंट मूवमेंट ऑफ द सन डायनल अपरेंट मूवमेंट ऑफ द सन कॉजिज ऑफ अपरेंट एंड डायनल मूवमेंट ऑफ द सन perihelion and aphelion positions of the earth and occurrence of the seasons now let us see causes of apparent movement of the sun the annual apparent movement of the sun is related to the revolution of the earth and the tilt of the earth's axis and the diurnal apparent movement of the sun is related to the rotation of the earth okay then we have studied two solstices or ions there are two ion or solstices in one year we can say that sun changes its position twice every year these changes are called as summer solstice or uttarayan and winter solstice or dakshinayan then we have also seen the sun's journey from dakshinayan to uttarayan then we have seen the perihelion and aphelion positions of the earth as the earth moves in an ellipse its distance from the sun does not remain the same it is at its minimum distance from the sun in the first week of january this is called the perihelion position of the earth in this position the southern end of the axis is towards the sun as against this in the first week of july the earth is at the farthest point from the sun this is called the aphelion position of the earth in this position the northern end of the axis is towards the sun we can see it on the slide in the diagram we have already studied it now in this second video we are going to study equinox circle of illumination spring or vernal equinox and autumnal equinox let's proceed then while we are going to see this we are also going to read the lesson okay the next part of the lesson as the earth revolves around the sun the equator receives perpendicular rays on two days in a year this condition occurs on 21st march and 23rd september on these days both the poles are at the same distance from the sun this is called equinox see figure 8.3 now on the screen of the slide you can see figure 8.3 the same figure you can see on page number 47 of your geography textbook the illuminated and dark portions of all the parallels including the equator are shown in figure 8. now illuminated means well lit okay i will start again the sentence the illuminated and dark portions of all the parallels including the equator are shown in figure 8.3 in the figure the circle of illumination divides all the parallels from the north pole to the south pole equally everywhere on earth night time and day time are of equal duration this condition is called equinox now on the screen in the slide you can see the equinox days there is sun and the perpendicular rays of the sun falling on the half part of the earth then you can see the circle of illumination here now what do you mean by circle of illumination the circle of illumination is an imaginary line which separates light from darkness and day from night you can see in the figure given here the circle of illumination okay let's move further
on equinox the sun's rays are perpendicular on the equator in this condition the circle of illumination coincides with the great circle defined by two opposite meridians in the northern hemisphere spring prevails from 21st of march to 21st of june while autumn prevails from 23rd september to 22nd december the southern hemisphere has the opposite seasons during these periods in the northern hemisphere 21st march is called spring or vernal equinox whereas 23rd september is called autumnal equinox the equinox or solstice dates can vary by a day or so so children let's see how equinoxes occur however in reality the equinox occurs at a specific moment in time when the sun crosses the celestial equator the imaginary line in the sky above earth's equator from south to north at this moment earth's axis is tilted neither away from or north towards the sun at this moment earth's axis is tilted neither away from nor towards the sun but is rather perpendicular to the sun's rays like the illustration shows now if you can see in the illustration here children september equinox illustration now this is the equinox in september and our september month is going on and yesterday you are going to see this video today that is 21st but yesterday was our equinox in the september 20th september okay now the sun's rays fall exactly perpendicular on the earth okay and we can see the circle of illumination let's move further equinoxes happen when the sun is exactly above a planet's equator equinoxes are moments when day and night are of equal length that is 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night there are two equinoxes every year in september and march when the sun shines directly on the equator and the length of day and night is nearly equal we say that it is an equinox today now this equinox causes the terminator or the dividing line between daytime and nighttime areas to pass through the planet's north and south poles this unique angle causes every year of the planet to experience approximately the same amount of daylight and darkness for one day two times each year that is we have studied march and september now in the figure that is given to you you can see that at the solstice the north end of the earth's axis of rotation is fully tilted either towards away towards or away from the sun because of the tilt the polar regions experience either 24 hours of day or 24 hours of night the sub solar point lies on one of the tropics at latitude 23 and 112 degrees north at south now here one question was asked to you in use your brain power on equinox days the two poles experience either sunrise or sunset on which pole will it be sunrise on 21st of march now this questions answer you are going to give me okay you can see the diagrams and you can easily tell me the answer then children there are two equinoxes every year in march and september when the sun shines directly on the equator 
and the length of night and day are nearly equal now in on the screen the slide you can see both the equinoxes march equinox and september equinox and you can see the difference in the position of the poles okay here you can see the circle of illumination the tilting of the axis and the circle of illumination okay let's move further now we will study spring equinox or vernal equinox first the vernal or the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere is the autumnal fall equinox in the southern hemisphere and vice versa means when on one side of the earth there is not the, there is vernal equinox on the other side there is autumnal equinox okay in the southern hemisphere you can see on the screen the march equinox and the september equinox then the june solstice and the december solstice okay here you can see the spring equinox or the vernal equinox when the spring starts now on saturday march 20 2021 the day and night will be almost equal in duration let us see the second equinox the autumnal equinox in this equinox children the trees shade their leaves means what there is autumn we know that in the month in the season of autumn the trees shed their leaves let us see the autumnal equinox is also called as the fall equinox equinoxes are opposite on either side of the equator so the autumnal or the fall equinox in the northern hemisphere is the spring or the vernal equinox in the southern hemisphere and vice versa i hope this concept is really clear to you then along with a planet's two annual solstices the two equinoxes mark the change in seasons how seasons occur the main things are that the solstices and the equinoxes both are responsible for the forming of the seasons well thank you children for watching this part of the video we will meet again in the third and the last part of the video where we are going to study the seasons and the geographical explanation of further part till then this is your teacher dipti kamalwar signing off let's meet in the next video session